Can you say it once more? Pilano, pilana. Means, means nothing. I mean, I don't know. I, I know a number of Spanish, but I've never heard that. Would you have any? Tenemos aquí alguna persona que empleaba hablar español? Para decirlo? Sí, señora. ¿Quiere decir malo? No. No quiere decir nada malo. Nada, nada malo. Our English, so it means nothing bad. Peleo doesn't mean to fight. Pelear means to fight. Yeah. Yes. Vance Randolph, the greatest or one of the three greatest American folklorists, he has been collecting a body from the Ozarks for 40 or 50 years. There are 1,200 pages of his manuscripts at the Library of Congress and the copies uh, in, in Indiana, Sex, Sex Research Institute. Uh, one, we, I, he's, he's on my list of, of uh, especially his toilet inscriptions from the Ozarks, but I won't get around to it until about 1979, but I can tell you with a happy heart that in November of last year, his first uncensored book was published by the University of Illinois Press called Pissing in the Snow and Other, and other Ozark folk, folk Tales, about 102 or three. Very, very interesting, completely uncensored, funnier than hell, and genuine material, plus it has annotations by Professor Frank Hoffman from uh, from university, hmm? Buffalo. Buffalo, yes, State University of Buffalo, zip code 142 something. <laughs> <laughs> and other notes by Raina Green, who works now at the Smithsonian Institute. So there's one available, it's about $7. It's really worthwhile, good, uncensored stuff. Uh, you have to rephrase that. Uh, for profanity, now what do we mean by profanity? Do, do we mean blasphemy? This is the trouble we have with swear word. What does swear word mean? Do, do we mean blasphemy, which is using the, the, the name of the Lord in vain? Or do we mean terms of abuse, sexual terms, scatological terms? In case you don't know what scatological terms means, that comes from Greek skatos, which is shit. So anything with excrements. Uh, in the, I, I well, I, I have a material in about 200 languages and dialects, and some of the raunchiest stuff has come out of Hungary, out of uh, Macedonia, uh, the Arabs, the Russians, the Germans, uh, French has a nice selection, Italians, Spanish, so it's all over the world. It's really a universal thing. Blasphemy is not universal. The, Catholic bla the Catholics are the, the biggest blasphemers. Now you don't, and they change from Italy. There are different, different, ins, different blasphemies in Italy. You would say, "Ostia, Madonna, Madrone di Bodello, Bella Puttana, Porco Dios," which is just terrible. Um, Mary, Mother of a Whorehouse, God, you are a pig, and so on. I mean, very bad. In Spanish, in Spain, you have "Me cago en Cristo," a very common Spanish insult. I shit on God, which you wouldn't use here. Uh, the French have uh, tabernacle, which is a tabernacle, or uh, colis, the chalice, which do not exist in German. In German we say sacrament, sacrament, and crucifix. These are the most common blasphemies. But I don't know any blasphemies used in the Jewish religion. As you know probably, uh, the Orthodox Jews don't even use the word God. They use that tetragrammaton, Yahweh, Y which supposedly stands for God. They use uh, euphemisms such as Adonai, my Lord, my Master, and so on. And I don't know any truly Orthodox Jew who could, cur who could blaspheme in, in, in Hebrew, in Yiddish. I think it's not done. Uh, in, in India, I found out that the Indian gods, that is in South India, the Tamils, and in Canada, uh, they use the names of the Indian gods as insults, Shiva and the black god, Kala, isn't it Kala? Kali. So they used to use them, but uh, whether the Arabs use them, whether the, the Muslims and, and Islam uses, uh, say for instance, Allah, you know, God, they don't do that. They may say, may Allah uh, shit on your beard. That's a different thing. Okay, other questions?
Yes, they are, these are the regional slurs where every, st every state has an insult, of course. Every profession has insults, every region, not just states, but also region within the region and even towns. Now, I've never heard of uh, hog, uh, pig hump, humpers. That's a nice one. <laughs> like the Arabs say, camel fuckers, that's the same thing. But snow nigger, that's a very strange term. Now, snow, of course, is understandable because of all the snow. But why nigger? It doesn't make any sense at all. It's just a dumbass uh, <laughs> snow humper. Okay, <laughs> other questions? Yes. You have to wait a few more months. It's called Maledicta. That means Latin, bad words. It's a journal. The first issue is going to be about 320 pages. Sometimes April, May, June when I'm done typesetting. If I don't go insane, typesetting 200 languages. <laughs> but uh, one source would be Professor Warren in the answer department. He's uh, one of the big people in this area who has done a lot of work. And he, c <laughs> in fact, he deserves a standing ovulation again. <laughs> okay, other questions? Okay, a few gestures. Where the hell? Okay. Uh, this, this gesture is a gesture of contempt used mainly in the Mediterranean, Italians, the whole Levantine area. Uh, what it means exactly, I really don't know yet. There's one big difficulty in, in gathering and studying gestures, and that is how do you describe it? Descriptions are so awkward. So we have one professor in Canada, Professor Barakat, who, has, who went to Lebanon and he photographed about 280 Arab gestures, of which 40 are, are filthy, such as this one that's also used, by the way, in West Africa. There must be the influence from the Arabs throughout Africa to West Africa. It means, you know, European is, this is supposed to be the preface, the preface here. Uh, this is a very bad insult in Chile, just doing this. It means either alone or uh, accompanied by words, huevon mierda. May your balls turn to shit. <laughs> it's a very strong anti. You have anti-male and anti-female insults. And if I were to translate this insult by saying, may your testicles turn into feces, you know, that just doesn't make sense. You've got to translate on the same level. Uh, thumbs down is an old, comes from Roman times. The evil eye, the evil eye, malocchio in Sicily, in Yiddish, and the whole East European culture you have the evil eye. That's a very common, uh, you put the hex on people. This also means in French, it's a, a cuckold. You know, a husband whose wife has a nice relationship. In Texas, it means go, Longhorns, go. <laughs> <laughs> it also means bullshit. So you have both ends of the bull, the horns and the, the other ends. Sticking out your tongue is an insult in many languages. Uh, giving the raspberry or the Bronx cheer, <laughs> you know, that's also an insult. Hissing, if you hiss at somebody at a lecture, uh, would be, for instance, a sign of rudeness, but the Japanese, to my knowledge, uh, they use it as a polite deference to superiors. <laughs> uh, for them, it's not any disapproval. The basuto use it as, a, as an applause. A funny thing is when the Americans came to, to Germany to liberate us, uh, <laughs> when there was a performance and the Americans, uh, let's see, what did they do which was wrong? They whistled, right. And in Germany, applause is by clapping your hands or knock, rapping, and whistling is just, you know, bleh, that's, you, you can't be any worse than that. And Americans whistling away happily and a German performance couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. This insult, in German, it means you are smart. Uh, here, it means, you know, he's a smart guy. He's got a smart cookie. But in Germany, this is an insult. It means you're crazy. You have a bird. Du hast einen Vogel. If you do this while driving and the other guy sees you, saying, you know, you crazy bastard, he, puts, he takes down your license plate, and you get a fine of 80 mark, $80 and up. Uh, 
spitting. Spitting is usually a sign of contempt, but the Maasai of Africa use it as a sign of affection and blessing. Thumbing your nose is also an insult, a phallic gesture perhaps, but in South India it's uh, a sign to express respect. Uh, bearing your back, your backside, is usually an insult. Uh, it also is involved with the mythological anal, what's it called, anal defense, warding off evil by showing the anus. Uh, this was it's called mooning, I think, here. I was once mooned by two gypsy girls. I didn't understand that it was a, a term of, uh, she tried to, to charm me. I was very fascinated by what I saw. Uh, a West African tribe uses that also as a term of uh, affection. And when the nobility, when the, the, uh, the higher people come by in their cars, the women turn around and put up their that uh, sarong or shari, sari over their backside. So it depends where you are. This gesture means very good, doesn't it? First class, prima, picobello. I used it in a lecture in Peru, and half of the women down fainted. I didn't know why. It means cunt in, in Spanish. Well, c'est la vie, people. This is life. I'm talking straight from the, from a what? From my loins. <laughs> Other questions? You want to photograph without that thing? illustrated the, the chain of uh, frustration, effect, and relief, release. That guy was te teed off by, he didn't know what was coming, what was coming off. So he was very upset. He got into a state of effect. I was the offending stimulus. And he got rid of his emotion, of his emotional steam, by writing the stuff. Uh, he says, uh, only fools you would use insults. But he, of course, used an insult by the headline uh, out of a word of out of the word of fools, then uh, he did some card stacking or whatever the trick is called by putting the insult book of Sharman, which he misspelled, between uh, smoking a pipe and uh, <laughs> and funeral uh, practices. So the whole thing was was really verbal aggression. He's a beautiful example of verbal aggression. He didn't know he was playing right into my card, so to speak. So bless his little soul. And may he run into a donkey tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm a serious call. I can't fool around. Okay, more questions. Randy means uh, it's it's uh, salacious, lascivious. Uh, it's not used in the states here. We have a number of people called Randy, right? like Jack Parr's daughter, Randy, that obnoxious pain in the ass. Now, in England, Randy is, is, is about on the same level as our level, horny, or even a little lower, Randy. Where it comes from, I don't know the etymology. You know, I'm sorry, I can't check it up. By the way, dictionaries are full of mistakes in etymologies. The word, the, the common insult for a Jew, kike, has about six uh, etymologies, all of which are wrong. And the latest uh, I found in the latest edition of the Randolph, uh, Rand Random House Dictionary says the word kike comes from a rhyme of the it insult for the Irish Mike, which is based on an, a rhyme insult of the Italian hike. Now, this is garbage. This is pure garbage. It's a very interesting uh, etymological study someday where the word kike comes from. Some people believe it comes from the uh, suffix ski. Uh, many, many Polish and Russian Jews had the word ski at the end, so it's a reduplication of ski, ski, kiki. Uh, some believe it comes, like Peter Tamoni from San Francisco believes, it comes from uh, the word kik, to, to look, to, to, to spy, because the American uh, clothes manufacturers sent spies over to Europe to the French couture, to the high couture, and these people are called the kikes or the kikes, the people who kik, who look. A third etymology, uh, which is endorsed by a professor in California, says it comes from the same word as wheel, circle. And why, why circle? Well, it is 
reported that there was a large group of Jewish immigrants in New York when they signed their naturalism, no, their immigration paper, they would have being unable to write, being illiterate, they would have to make some symbol and that would be normally the cross, right? You make an X, but the cross being supposedly a hated symbol of suppression, uh, many of those East European Jews refused to make a cross and instead made a circle. And a circle in Yiddish is a, a keikel, a keikel, a circle. You know, you see the etymological relationship. But I'm not convinced yet. So this is just one of the, the many things which have to be cleared up. Now, there are about two dozen, one dozen very common, and perhaps a second dozen of f quite frequently used insults. I have on my on index cards over 2,000 American insults which can be used and have been used by politicians and other people. Uh, but basically it's just what? Asshole and, and a few sexual terms. Now the term motherfucker, which is, by the way, uh, has been studied by Professor J, Timothy J in Kent State University. He gave girl, males and female students about a dozen words and they had to rate the tabooness. You know, how, how, how how nauseating offensive it is. And the word motherfucker was the highest rated of inoffensiveness, I think it was 8.3, followed closely by, guess what? Yes, cocksucker was the second one. Also very, very bad. And you end up with something like pig was 3.2. <coughs> so you can actually rate the offensiveness of these insults. Now the word motherfucker, which is really a, a terrible word, when I hear this used against me by some people who shouldn't use that language, uh, I just, you know, it just upsets me. If another guy means it in a, in a, in a friendly way, hey, you, that was a real motherfucking good lecture, then, you know, you're not that, up, that upset, but it shouldn't be used that way. And are there changes? Yes, they are. Uh, we, have draw, we have drawn out everything raunchy there is. I mean, mother is about as bad as you can get. And interestingly, the, the, the first part of this compound, mother, stands for the whole word. So poor mother, that word really took on a very, very awful meaning. So we've drawn up, we've drawn from the worst we can. And what's left? I mean, there's really nothing left. You, make, you have to make up insults uh, or adapt, adapt them from other language, but I think we've pretty much run the gamut. If we had used insults for, for the last several hundred years, we still could reserve a few, but we just have used them up and I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, the personal names used as an insult, I s it has developed in the States and at the same time in Germany too. You Nixon, or you Agnew. Uh, in Germany they say you Brandt and you Strauss. These are certain politicians. One is a very big bully, the other one is a sassy mouthed uh, backstabber. So they use political names of politicians they used in Germany already as insults. In the States, I guess they wouldn't then are popular, but you know, he's a real Nixon. But what does it mean? We know it's something derogatory, but in what, in which semantic field does it fall? So we, we have no clear meaning of it. Oh yeah, right, you have uh, Hitler and Goebbels and Himmler and you had the quizzling, you know, of, uh, in the Second World War. In fact, I use uh, the word m micro Hitler to describe uh, the dean at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, micro because he's about that tall, not just inside, I mean his whole mind, his soul, his brain is all very minute and he's like Hitler. Yes, you know, the first time All in the Family came on, which was about, I believe, eight, eight to ten years ago, they, they, they broke a number of taboos, such as flushing a toilet. You know, there was a big taboo. Ha, ah, it still gets big guffaws when Arch is up in the reading room. Uh, they used uh, racial terms for 
I know Polish, anti-Jewish, uh, anti-German, anti-Italian, and the Polish Congress, or the Polish Anti-Defamation League, tries so hard of stopping, uh, stopping these shows, but just two or three days ago, the Supreme Court ruled that Archie Bunker can say any racial slur, and he's protected by the First Amendment. So it's, it's gonna get worse, or better, whatever. Maybe it's better for our mental health if we get a little bit more open, less uptight. I don't advocate sexual revolutions or anything, but you know, have an open mind. Just as homosexuals used to be despicable criminals who should be killed, mentally ill, they were kept in cages up to the, I think, 17th century in England. People used to go out on Sunday to the, to the mentally insane. They had in cages, they played with sticks, uh, threw sticks and, and stabbed them. It was a big fun. Uh, the alcoholics, they were just subhuman things. Now, if you find, get these people, the homosexuals and the abusive language user, uh, and these people get them out of the closet and let some sunlight at them and examine them, and you find out they're really not as bad to, as, as they seem to be. So I'm, I'm just ad I'm asking for tolerance, not for acceptance or using it, but tolerance. Don't be so damn uptight when you hear somebody like this, something like this. Negroes, I mean, because nigger is already an insult. In fact, nigger is already an insult. Well, that took a, uh, the word Negro really is a Latin term, you know, nigger, meaning black. It wasn't an insult for many, many years, but the Southerners, because of their speech pattern or their phonology, they pronounce not Negro, but nigra, nigra, nigra. And in fact, they still have two terms, nigra, which is no, which is a, 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 a non-offensive word, and nigger, which is an offensive word. Uh, where did it come from? Well, simply from, from the Latin nigger, which means black, which is not an insult. And we went all the way around the circle, and now we call blacks blacks. Although there are no blacks, there are no, no negro is black. Of all the negro and negroid people I've looked at it, it in it, ethnological dictionaries and lexicons, there is no, no black Negro, with a few exceptions in the central, in, in equatorial Africa, they're almost bluish black. But these are very few. The rest are all brown. So why do you call a brown a black? We are called whites. Are we white? We are pinks. We are gray. We are not white. Well, at any rate, I don't know whether this was a good enough explanation. Okay, oh, where'd I come from? Uh, well, there's, uh, there are some, some lists have been established by black scholars, in fact, all the adjectives and nouns applied to, to Negro. Uh, a very good example you may have seen in last week's uh, Saturday night. Did you see Saturday night by any chance? It was a rerun of an early piece in which Chevy Chase interviews that, uh, Richard Pryor. There was a very interesting comment. They used, the black used terms against the white and the white against the term. And they were very well structured in intensity, in, abuse, in, in, uh, in abusiveness. They started out with blacky and honky, uh, nigger, dead honky, uh, redneck. What was the other one? It was very well structured. When one had a, had a mild one, the other one mild. Stronger, 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 stronger. Where did it come from? I don't know. I would have to look at the list of, of synonyms for Negro and, and see what, what they attack, what so-called shortcomings they attack. But another question. Mm 
Well, this, this insult, uh, this uh, mutual, this uh, chain, not chain reaction, what do you call it, like a litany or one, next, one, next, one, next, uh, that is, is it common in Africa? I know it's common in South America, in Central America, in Turkey, uh, the blacks in Philadelphia use it, uh, the, some whites in Philadelphia and in New York use it, so I think that's a common way of verbal fighting. The Eskimos use it, uh, in fact, over days, they're called the Nith songs, in which one abuses and the next one. It's just getting rid of your steam instead of killing and stabbing. I, I would be glad to, but I guess we have to. Thanks a lot for coming.